I don't run, but I would run if I had to in exchange for pasta. Not a marathon, but maybe a 5K. <laughs> Hi, I'm Bill, I'm a professional chef, and this is a $145 mac and cheese. Hi, I'm Emily, I'm a home cook, and these are my $10 mac and cheese ingredients. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love Velveeta. Well, I guess I'm making lobster mac and cheese. All right, so here is Chef Bill's recipe book. As usual, no measurements, no instructions, just ingredients. For my mac and cheese, I was planning on making cavatelli with lobster mornay sauce. I had some excellent ingredients to work with. I had a wild lobster imported fresh from Nova Scotia. I'm from Nova Scotia. <laughs> We're from the same place. And use the shells to infuse the base of the sauce. Made with whole milk, thyme, freshly ground nutmeg, bay leaf, butter, flour, garlic, black peppercorns, and cayenne pepper. Essentially a lobster shell infused bechamel. To uh, make that into a Mornay, I was going to add cheese. A lot of cheese. Gruyere, raclette, aged cheddar, and Parmesan. These cheeses smell incredible. And I had everything I needed to make fresh cavatelli from scratch. Double O flour, organic eggs, and milk. It was going to be rich, creamy, and delicious. This looks incredible. And of course, there's the lobster in the room, the elephant in the room. <laughs> I think it's looking at me. That's okay. With Emily's recipe, I have simpler ingredients, stuff that you probably already have in your pantry or at the local grocery store. So the mac and cheese that I was going to make was a slow cooker, one pot, Velveeta concoction. It's basically the closest you can get to making mac and cheese from a box while making it homemade. <laughs> Macaroni. Flour, breadcrumbs, extra sharp cheddar, evaporated milk, butter, Tabasco, and Velveeta. Also, some ketchup. Because I do like to put a little bit of ketchup on my mac and cheese. I won't put ketchup on this mac and cheese. I love ketchup, I'm not insane. These ingredients might be simple, but I think I can do something with these. If I had to guess, I would say these probably cost around 15 bucks. Okay. I'm gonna go like $77. $145! <laughs> I'm not terrified at all, don't worry about it. So, I have some concerns. Looks like I'm gonna have to turn a lobster into food, which I can do, but am a little nervous about, that's all. My recipe uses a lobster mornay sauce. Clearly, we're going to be using a lobster. We wanna use the freshest seafood possible. That's the live lobster. It's the best for everybody, including the lobster. So we wanna dispatch the lobster in the most humane way possible. Looks like I'm gonna to have to call Rose. Emily! Hi, Rose! So, what are you making today? So it's a cavatelli with a lobster mornay sauce is the official name of the recipe. Yum, it sounds very fancy. Uh, so I do have some questions for you. Obviously. <laughs> I'm here for you, Emily. What do I do with the lobster? Get the lobster cold first. So you can put them in the freezer, maybe 15 minutes. Take the lobster out, take a sharp knife and poke into the head and make a, a cut and then immediately into hot boiling water. You're gonna get really nice results and it's the best way to dispatch that lobster. Okay, so then um, once I have a cooked lobster, what do I do with it? So you're going to take your lobster and cool it down a little bit first so you can handle it. Have a bowl and a side towel ready. With these delicious lobsters, we wanna use every part of that animal so you can save your shells and the body and you can actually infuse your milk when you're heating it to make the Mornay sauce. So use your shells from the claws as well as the tail and then save the body and make a stock with it later. I feel better now. I can do this. I can definitely probably do this. <laughs> so like Rose said, the most humane way to kill a lobster is just to take your knife and quickly in a downward motion, pull it through the head. So I'm gonna do that and then I can put my lobster into the boiling water. So to start off, I'm going right to the best part, the Velveeta. We're going to make some Velveeta croutons. What is Velveeta? A pasteurized recipe cheese product, liquid gold. I love it because it melts great, it's creamy, it's definitely a nostalgic flavor. All right, so the lobster is ready to go into the boiling water. Ooh, that's hot. Ooh, that's hot. All right, we're good. We're good. Everything's fine. I'm just going to cut these into 
one inch slices, sort of like miniature mozzarella sticks. Because Velveeta melts so easily and so wonderfully. And we're gonna pop this in the freezer uh, to keep it super, super cold before we put it in the fryer. All right, I'm gonna check on my lobster. I think it is done, so let's pull them out. Looks red, looks delicious. I'm excited to eat them. Sorry. So you might notice I have one glove on today. I am not a super villain, nor is it for fashion purposes. I cut myself in the kitchen the other day. Occupational hazard. So I've got half that's gonna go in the sauce, half that's been cubed. I'm gonna pop that in the freezer before we bread it and fry it. So my lobster's all cooked, it's cooled down. Time to take this lobster apart. So I haven't broken down a lot of lobsters in my life, but I am Nova Scotian, so I am willing to believe it's just in my blood. Okay, I'm gonna just start with the uh, nice and easy, just pull in these guys out. Claws removed. I feel like there's a thing where you can just like crack. Maybe I have to, yeah, there we go. There's like stuff here, and I'm not sure if what we've got going on is lobster eggs or lobster guts. I think we can just sit in here for now. So now we're going to bread our Velveeta croutons. We're gonna be double breading them just to make sure that they have a nice crispy, crunchy coating and that that Velveeta stays inside of the breading when it melts. So I've got the frozen Velveeta. Uh, it's been in the freezer for about 15, 20 minutes. And we've got the breadcrumbs and the flour from Emily's original recipe and two eggs. With my tail, I think I have two options. One is that I can go from this end, and the other is to go down the middle. Let's try the this end side. This is a little picky bit that you can use to like get meat out when it's stuck. So I'm just cutting down the center with my kitchen shears. Put my shells in my broth shell area. Yeah, I think that's a pretty, pretty good tail. So I've got my uh, breadcrumbs here, flour. I'm gonna whisk these up. I'm gonna season my breadcrumbs just a little bit with black pepper and a little salt. So I've gotten a lot of my meat out. The next thing I'm gonna do is handle my claws. Anytime that I'm plating lobster, uh, I really like to keep the whole claw together. It makes a nice presentation. It's gonna be tricky. I'm not gonna lie to you. In order to do that, I separate the whole claw arm from the body, including the knuckles, and then separate the claw from the knuckles. <gasps> So my claw is still mostly intact right now. The next step is to perform claw surgery, which is to try and gently get it out of here. So just having to be very gentle while also breaking a claw. Gently crack that claw open and sort of pull it out. Just being as tender as you can and keep that all together. Okay. <laughs> yeah! <sighs> okay, don't freak out. Don't get cocky. I'm doing rocket surgery over here. <gasps> so I got the end of the shell off. So now it's just about... <laughs> Feel good. Feeling real good. <laughs> Looks like they'll let me back into Nova Scotia. We're gonna go flour, egg, panko, egg, back into the breadcrumbs. So we've got a really nice breadcrumb coating. I'm just gonna repeat that for all of these. All right, so I have my lobster shells soaking. I'm going to use them to infuse my Mornay with more lobstery goodness. And now I'm just going to cut up the tail and knuckle meat. I want my lobster pieces to be not too big because I should probably go with the pasta, like in terms of size and experience. I'm ready for my nap. Most delicious things are double breaded, at least in my world. If your breadcrumbs start to get really eggy, just push them sort of to the back. We're double breadcrumbing just to get that really nice crunchy breading on the outside. But also, Velveeta has such a low melting point that we really want to get them kind of encased in that breading so that you're not just leaking Velveeta out into your fryer fat. So our Velveeta cubes are double breaded. I'm gonna throw these back in the freezer until we're ready to fry. I'm gonna start my pasta dough. For the cavatelli, I was gonna make my own pasta dough, something I do all the time. Super easy, feels more impressive than it actually is hard. I have made pasta dough before. I have not made cavatelli before, but I'm gonna go with my gut and we'll see what happens. So Emily, don't be intimidated. This is a super easy trick. Once you do it once, you'll wanna do it all the time. First thing I'm gonna do is simply make a well with my flour. Put all of your flour into a nice tidy pile. Making a little well, is that enough of a well? I don't know, I'm always making it up as I go, like this song which I am writing. Look at these yolks, they're so orange. They're like a sunset. And I'm gonna just mix these up, I think. 
No. Yes. Yeah. Looking good, feeling good. Fill that well with all of your eggs and your milk and your oil. Then using your fingertips, gradually break up your egg yolks and gently start to incorporate your flour all the way around your well, sort of slowly adding it in and making a paste. I am going to try to just keep working this and incorporate as much of all of this as I can. Once you start to bring it together as a shaggy dough, bring your remaining flour in and start kneading it by hand. I think that if I just kind of keep going, eventually it'll come together. I think that's like my career. But just keep going. Hmm, kind of looks like Velveeta. Once your dough is smooth and elastic and feels like your earlobe. Oh, yeah. This is ready to rest. Wrap it in food wrap and set it aside for at least 30 minutes, if not an hour. There we go. That's a wrap. Okay, let's fry these Velveeta croutons. It's got our frozen Velveeta cubes, double breaded, ready to go. We've got our canola oil between 350 and 360 right now. I'm just gonna fry these until they're golden brown and let's see how this goes. My pasta dough has been resting for about half an hour and it is time for me to shape my cavatelli. Bill has sent me these two contraptions. I'm not sure how to use either of them, but I am going to try. I'm going to try this one first because it looks less scary and less potentially ouchy. There's two different types of apparatus that you can use to make the cavatelli. You might see a hand cranked machine. The hand crank's super easy, but the one that you do by hand is super satisfying. So if you have the old style, but really nice wooden board, it has ridges in it. You're gonna take your cigar and chop it up into small pieces. What you do is you take one of these little balls hold it, press it firmly either with your thumb or two fingers evenly, and you roll the cavatelli against the wooden surface. Actually, I think that could be right. All right, that's one. It might not be cavatelli, but it's cavatelli-like. cavatelli -like. Cavatelish. We'll just keep going. The more I do it, the better it'll be. And I think that the secret that I'm missing is that I have to get this edge at this point so that when I get to here, they're both thin. Like that! Rose was right, it is very satisfying. I am the cavatelli queen! <laughs> See, mac and cheese is fun food, so this is like a fun garnish. Like little mozzarella sticks. We're almost there. These are gonna be good. So clearly I was nailing it with the cavatelli board, but I like a challenge. So I'm gonna also try this little machiney guy and just see what happens. And first thing I have to do is make a cigar. Put some arm strength into it, you know? All right, I'm gonna go with this. Yeah, now we're cooking with gas. This is a blast. So one of the main things that I'm just keeping track of is trying to maintain a consistent temperature with the oil around 350 because you're adding cold frozen things directly into the oil, clearly your temperature is going to drop. So you just want to make sure you're kind of adjusting and keeping an eye on your temperature. If it gets too high, they'll get too, too brown too fast and you won't get the cheese to melt on the inside. All right, that's it. Velveeta croutons. Okay, so these look way better and more uniform than the ones I was making by hand. Mine were fun. These are better. I accept that. Cavatelli made. <laughs> Let's see how it is on the inside. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> it tastes like a bowling alley in a good way. I'm going to make my Mornay. Mornay is a bechamel sauce that has had cheese add to it. What is a bechamel sauce? Well, it's a milk sauce that has been thickened with a roux, butter, and flour. First thing I need to do is just sort of infuse my milk with flavor. Just taking my lobster shell pieces. Cool, that feels lobstery. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is put my garlic, bay leaf, thyme, and peppercorns in here. All right, so I have all my aromatics in here and I'm just gonna add my milk. All right, I'm just setting this on low and letting it warm up. And once this heats up, it's roux and cheese time, baby. So with Emily's recipe, it was a dump it all together into a crock pot and leave it for two hours kind of recipe. But luckily for me, I've got all of the uh, materials here to make sort of a classic stovetop mac. I'm going to make cheese sauce. I'm going to boil some pasta. We're going to fold it together, garnish it with the crispy croutons. It's going to be delicious. So let's just start with this cheddar. 
I'm just gonna grate this on the large size. Just adding this into the pot here. This is very simple. It's doing the same thing as the crock pot, but you have a little bit more control. I'm just gonna coarsely chop this Velveeta up. It's so melty that it doesn't really need to be that small. Both of my cheeses are in here. Well, one cheese product and one cheese. And I'm going to add some evaporated milk. So while my milk is simmering, I'm going to just use the food processor to shred my cheese. Okay, I'm gonna turn this on low. Oh, well, things are going great. I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> I think we're done. This is enough cheese. All right, there we go. That's cheese. Easily shredded. <laughs> I love evaporated milk. I, it will really make this cheese sauce creamy. You're getting all of that dairy without as much water. So it's great for something like cheese sauce. I'm gonna add like most of this can to start. Just really get my cheeses down in there. We'll let this start to melt. So the next thing I have to do is make my roux and then just kind of bring everything together. First thing I have to do is just turn this on super low and I'm going to put my butter in the pan and I'm going to add my cayenne pepper and my nutmeg. So when Emily's making her bechamel, she should make sure that she blooms the nutmeg and the cayenne pepper in that melted butter. Get that so it's nice and aromatic then add your flour, whisk it all together. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just strain my milk, pour my milk into here. It smells good. All right, I'm just adding a little bit of salt. This is starting to look nice, huh? More like a sauce, less like a terror. So the next thing I'm gonna do is just start adding my cheese in. So I've gotta be really careful not to boil the cheese because that would be very bad. So unlike Emily's cheese sauce, which you really shouldn't boil, this with the Velveeta and the evaporated milk is a little bit more forgiving. Okay, this is exactly what we're looking for. This like velvety cheese sauce. So now that the cheese has been melted, I'm gonna add a couple dashes of hot sauce here. That's just to give it a little bit of flavor. I like the little bit of uh, vinegar that hot sauce adds to it too. I'm gonna keep adding more cheese. Look at that, that's a sauce. Okay, so I think that this is done, but before I cover it up and move on to the next thing, I'm just going to give it a taste. <laughs> it's great. It's really good. It's great. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. So I'm just gonna put a lid on this, set it aside, keep it warm while we boil our pasta and finish the rest of our stuff. All right, so now I'm going to cook my pasta. First thing I have to do is toss a little more salt, salt. in my water. There we go. I'm just gonna dump this in. And since this is fresh pasta, it's gonna cook really quickly. And I can tell they're pretty much cooked because they are all floating, which is great. I'm just gonna drain this off. Because we're going to be holding this while we rewarm our sauce, I'm gonna put a little vegetable oil on this to make sure that it doesn't stick together. All right, my pasta is good to go. So I'm just going to scoop all of these into my sauce. All right, and the next thing I'm gonna do is put my lobster meat into here. I'm just combining this. I'm gonna add a little splash of evaporated milk here to kind of loosen it up, bring it all together. Ah, there we go. Adding a little more hot sauce just for a little extra flavor, a little dash of salt. And I'm just gonna fold it all together. That looks good. To me, this looks perfect. I think we're ready to plate this thing up. So I'm just gonna grab my plate. Oh yeah, there we go. This is gonna be so good. It's like the best boxed mac and cheese you've ever had. I'm gonna take my big boy cloth. You know what? I'm gonna do both cloths. These little croutons. And just a little parsley on top. And I think that looks pretty good. And here's my take on Chef Bill's lobster mac and cheese. D that's my take on Emily's mac and cheese. I am very excited to eat this. <laughs> It's looking delicious. <laughs> I think I drooled a little. <laughs> Don't worry, Emily, I didn't forget the ketchup. We can use that as a little dip. All right, it is time to taste. <laughs> Do I have cheese all over my face? <laughs> really good. <laughs> Salty and cheesy. And you get that beautiful sweet lobster meat. It's really good. The crunchy with the creamy, it's very good. <laughs> This is so simple. 
I don't think I would change much at all, even if I had access to other ingredients. Wow. All right. I get it. Sometimes mac and cheese that doesn't come from a box is also exceptional. I can't wait to check in with Emily to see how she did with the lobster Mornay. I bet she did great. I hope he is impressed. I'm going to show him my claw. Hi, <laughs> Chef Bill. <laughs> Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. How you doing? Good. How did it go? Good. Oh my gosh, it's so tasty. <laughs> Good. How did the lobster go? Um, pretty good, actually. I actually got a whole claw out, which I did not think yes. I was going to do. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Yay, thank you so much. I did my best. Oh, it looks great. <laughs> there was a big lobster. <laughs> this was so good. I'm glad it went well. Here, I'll show you what I did. So I did like stove top and then fried the Velveeta. I don't know if you can see. <laughs> what? That's so cool. <laughs> and then I served it with your ketchup. <laughs> A little side of ketchup. Don't worry, I won't put ketchup on this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think you'll make um, cavatelli at home now? You know what? I totally would. I love that little board thing where you just do... Yeah. I was like, oh, I could do this and have this in my house. And do you think you'll be using Velveeta more? I mean, I love Velveeta. I was not a stranger to Velveeta beforehand, okay. so... It was so great to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, take care. Bye. 